Hello, my name is Carol, and today we're going to be talking about the best practices for the transfer step of your Western blot. Now, if you have ever struggled trying to optimize the transfer on your Western blot, you're definitely not alone. There's a lot of different parameters that we need to take into consideration to optimize that step. Everything from the percentage of the jump matrix that you used, all the way down to the composition of your transfer buffer. So yeah, there's a lot of things to consider and to optimize. And to be honest with you, you're gonna have to do some research on your own so that you can really pinpoint every single technique that's gonna be better for your particular target of interest and your sample type. But on this course, we're gonna be able to really help you out through that process and review some of the main things that you wanna take into consideration when you're trying to optimize your transfer for step. Now, when we go through all of those steps, um, we're going to be focusing on wet tank transfer because when we think about a dry transfer, there's really not a lot of parameters that we can optimize. Most of it comes set from factory. But if you find a couple of things that you may be able to translate to the dry transfer, by all means, please do. So yeah, optimizing your transfer conditions may be a little bit challenging, but trust me, you can do it. We're going to do it together. So let's jump right in and get that process started. So in the science section, Darren has just reviewed with you what are the roles of voltage and current during the transfer step, which in actuality are virtually the same that we had for the SDS page for running our gel. Those parameters are going to be vir virtually the same, including our main thing to consider, which is heat generation. That's going to be the one thing that we're going to need to keep an eye on, make sure we're not overheating our system. Now, the one thing that's going to be slightly different between running our gel and transferring our proteins to the membrane is that the resistant is probably not going to change much throughout that process. It's going to be a slightly high resistant, but it should be fairly constant. So what that ultimately means is that we should be able to keep current consistent without leading to an increase in voltage and therefore an increase in temperature. Most researchers choose to have their transfer performed under constant current. The reason for that is that if the current is constant, they know exactly how long the transfer step should be. It's not going to change. And that's particularly important because on the transfer step, we have no visual cue as to when the transfer is complete, as to when the proteins have migrated from the gel onto the membrane. They're going to perform that transfer under constant current, but they're also going to keep the temperature under control with the aid of ice packs or similar um, artifacts to make sure that the temperature doesn't rise. And that is super important because if the temperature does rise, we're going to end up having protein degradation. And if we have protein degradation, the primary antibody is probably not going to be able to recognize the antigen on our protein of interest. In addition to that, if the polyacrylamide gel melts, it may not be able to sustain the protein separation and resolution that we obtain during the SDS page. Not only that, but the melted gel might actually bind to the membrane so that we end up having gel fragments on the membrane that can create a lot of background. And we definitely don't want to have high background on our Western blot. Now, remember that deciding what is going to be the perfect current or voltage for your transfer step is going to depend on your particular conditions, such as the gel percentage, the transfer buffer that you chose, and even the molecular weight of your proteins of interest. Don't forget to check the recommendations of your polyacrylamide gel as well as your transfer system. For example, the more modern transfer systems are typically faster, but they require a higher current or voltage. Similarly, when we're using a polyacrylamide gel with a higher percentage matrix, we're typically going to need to use a higher current or voltage. You'll also want to take into account the molecular weight of your targets of interest, and you may need to adjust the transfer accordingly. For example, for very small proteins, you probably want to reduce the time of the transfer as well as the current or voltage that you're using. For medium to large proteins, we're going to increase the current as well as increase the time. Now, when we're talking about huge proteins, we may actually have to extend that transfer time and to help maintain temperature under control, we'll actually use very low um, voltage or current for those overnight transfers. 
For us to avoid having issues with protein degradation or even with our polyacrylamide gel melting, we're gonna have to make sure our system doesn't overheat and we're gonna take additional steps to ensure that. It all starts with using a cold transfer buffer. You can use transfer buffers that are kept at four degrees before you start your transfer process. Depending on your transfer apparatus, you may also be able to insert um, ice packs inside your transfer system and put a steering bar in there to make sure that the temperature is low across the entire system. Another great option if you have that is perform your transfer inside a cold room. However, if that's not an option for you, you don't have the nice cold room where you can perform your transfer, you can always use lots of ice to make sure that your transfer stays at a low temperature. However, if you do decide to do that, be careful. You wanna make sure that your transfer apparatus remains level as the ice melts. And you also wanna make sure that that water from the ice melting doesn't get inside your transfer system since that would compromise the integrity of your transfer buffer. Remember, preventing temperature from rising is a must here. So that's one of the main things that you're gonna need to keep an eye out for. But there's a couple other things that we also need to talk about and we're gonna cover that on our next lesson.